Here we have a Checkmate Lasers Rook 50 watt laser engraving system. Next to it is my heavy duty industrial high pressure water chiller and that's relevant to what I've done to my laser tube that won't be necessary for most systems uh, that we ship with the standard water chiller. The reason for this video is to show how easy and quick it is to swap out a laser tube on a Checkmate laser system. Although this is a Rook, it's the same procedure on the Pond, Knight, Bishop, Queen, King, uh, even the Grandmaster series. It's the same procedure, very simple, very quick to do. Here's the back of the laser system. As you can see, there is a hinged lid cover protection for the laser tube that has a lock on both ends. Here's one on the right side, and there's the other one on the left. I already have the keys already inserted into the lock, so we can quickly unlock it. I'll turn off that one and turn that one. And then the lid just opens up, gives us quick access to the laser tube. Here's the problem though. You need to keep this lid open so you can easily work on the machine while you're uh, without being encumbered by the lid itself. So you have a couple options. Right here, which I only have one hand to work with so I can't move it, but you can see that pin right there is on a spring action. It allows it to move to the right, which unhooks it from the little opening right there, the little pin. On this opposite side is the opposite end of the the lid and once you take off that pin and the whole lid comes out very quick very easy to do that and I always do that when I'm doing an initial setup of the machine but to, to swap out a laser tube is not necessary you can choose to do that if you like the other option has a second pair of hands to hold this open like I'm doing here problem with that is you need a second pair of hands and this procedure doesn't require two people my cho preferred choice and I'll show you here my preferred choice is to use a bungee cord. Basically hook it up to the lid right here. The lid handle. Okay. Dangling down into the back with the lid open. Just grab the bungee cord, extend it out here. Boom. Done. The beauty of that is bungee cords are a dime a dozen. Very easy to hold it open. The lid opens up the uh, cover and you have full access to your laser tube without taking off the cover protection lid or requiring a second pair of hands. This is my preferred choice of opening up the lid and keep it open while I work on a laser tube. Okay, now we're at the laser tube itself and as you can see, this is just a 50 watt tube. It's not very long. You may have a much bigger one up to the 120, even the 150. And just to show you what I have here, what we've done, which is now standard on our machinery, is we now solder a short uh, ground cable to each laser tube and a short power cable to each laser tube but the important thing is what's already mounted to the laser machine is a um, the, the power cable which we've included a new quick release connection that's the power we also have one over here on the ground here I show a zip tie holding the water hose and the ground cable to a brace that we have on all our machines and the point of that brace and the zip tying like this is just to keep these cables and hoses away from any belts and gears so that nothing gets kinked up. On the power side, we have the same situation. Hose, power, zip tied to that brace, and once again, to keep it away from all the gears. Now, before I continue on with this procedure tutorial, I do definitely want to point out, in my particular machine set up here, that white cable is to my water chiller and the black cable is to an extension which powers my blower and compressor. You may have all three units plugged in the back of your machine but this is my particular setup. So these can stay plugged in. That's not the issue. What is the issue is the power to the actual machine. That's the main power plug on my machine here. So definitely want to unplug it because I do not want any power electrical current going to the machine while I'm working on it. There are three points of disconnect that each laser tube requires. One is the power cable, another one is the water chiller hose, and the third one is the clamps. And that's the back side of it, and we also have the same situation here in the front. A clamp, water hose, negative cable. The quick disconnect, which we've implemented in all our machines now, literally unplugs with one hand. It's that simple. Okay, same with both sides. Pull it out, pull on it, disconnects real easily. Let's go ahead and remove the straps from this tube. Takes a three millimeter wrench, spin that off. Once it pops off, 
you'll be able to remove the strap completely. And I'm doing this with one hand so it looks a little more difficult than it really is. Once that pops off, I tend to take that Allen screw out of there. Right here on the side, this is where I tend to do it so I don't get lost. I know where it's at at all times. Take the strap, swivel it out of the way. The other side I've already done. You're probably wondering what this uh, yellow covering is. That's nothing more than electrical tape. It just happens to be yellow, wrapped around a rubber seal, that uh, rubber protection seal that goes around the laser tube. Because we don't want a metal strap being clamped down directly on glass because you're going to damage the glass. That's going to shatter it. So this is a protection to make sure that you don't have metal directly on glass. And the other thing about it is that the way we structure all these tubes is that when this is done properly, then when you adjust uh, your tube against the mirror, everything's already lined up. You may do a little tweaking of your beam alignment, very little if necessary, but the idea is that keeps that metal strap off directly off of the glass. This is already set with uh, one wrap of a rubber, and then that electrical tape is uh, basically about two wraps to secure it in place, and you're done. Now, as I showed you earlier, I have a high-pressure industrial-based uh, water chiller. It's so strong that the tube right here, I have to put a zip tie on it, uh, the hose to the laser tube. Otherwise, the pressure will pop this right off. I've got this on both sides here. Okay. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that because the uh, standard water chiller is um, just enough pressure to pump the water through at a steady pace, but not necessarily going to pop off the tube. I put the wire zip tie on there just for safety's sake because I've had it happen to me before. And you might do the same as well just for you know peace of mind, but not necessary. Now, I personally am not going to take that off this time because I already have a tube on there. This is an old testing tube that I use with each machine. And as you can see, the water is pretty dirty. My industrial chiller is about 10 years old. It definitely needs to be flushed out because you can see the water's, you know. But I don't worry about it because it's just a test system anyway. Alrighty? Okay, we've already disconnected the water hose. In my case, I didn't. We've already disconnected the straps that hold the laser tube in place. And we've already disconnected the power cable here and the ground cable here. So all we need to do now is just cut the zip tie, pull that out and discard it. Cut that zip tie and discard it and now the tube is ready to be lifted out as you can see it comes out real easily just take it out now like I said I didn't remove my hose but it just comes out dispose of it properly put in the new one and reverse the procedure that we just did to remove it just to be clear when we ship a laser tube from Checkmate Lasers facility in Las Vegas we ship it to you ready to install on your machine what that entails is we pre-solder the power cable directly to the laser tube, heat shrink that for protection. Also add the uh, female connection side and we heat shrink that as well. On the ground side we do the same thing. We solder it directly to the laser tube for you and we heat shrink wrap it including the female side of the connection. That's, solder, that's um, connected and heat shrink wrapped as well. We do ship a second set of uh, rubber protective sheathing that you must install, but all it takes is a quick wrap around to fit tightly and uh, use electrical tape to wrap it around twice and you're done. To reinstall the laser tube, you're going to put it in place on the bracket where it's supported. Put your swivel around your straps and bolt it down with the Allen screws, three millimeter Allen screws. Okay, do that to both sides, tube is now in place. Don't put it too snug yet because we need to adjust it. Second thing you're going to do is add your water hose and do a zip tie, which I do here just for peace of mind. That way you know it's not going to pop off. That's the back end and, of course, the front end. Now, the quick disconnect, it just um, you can't put this in backwards because we use two different size quick disconnects. So this side connection, which is the ground, will not fit on the opposite side, which is the power. And, of course, you got black matching black, so you know you can't get that wrong. In this case, it's red matching red, which is hot for power. And this connection is, of course, a different size than this connection. So if you put the tube in backwards, it's not going to connect. And we do that intentionally to make sure you put it in the proper direction. As you can see, I've already connected the power with the quick disconnect. I've already strapped down the rear strap, the front strap, and also have connected the ground cable. 
In this case, the uh, water hose in the front is also connected with a zip tie, and the rear has been connected with a zip tie. I have not secured the strap completely down, so I can still adjust the tube as necessary. The reason for that is I need to make sure before I zip tie the wire and the hose to my brace here is that I've got room that the hose isn't being bent or kinked anywhere in the front or the back so that I have room to do that. Second thing is that the distance between the lens and the, the laser tube and the first mirror, I keep it about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. That's sufficient. To be honest, it doesn't really matter how far apart it is as long as your, everything's nice and secure and your strap is you know, on that rubber piece. Then if it's a sixteenth of an inch, half an inch, or anything in between, it really doesn't matter because the beam still has to hit mirror one to go through the sequence to the lens. So if it's a little bit farther off, not a big deal. It doesn't change your power output, doesn't change anything. So I tend to keep it about that far, which is roughly about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. Once you're comfortable with the position of the laser tube, then you can strap down your tube securely and finally zip tie the power cable and hose to the brakes, to the bracket, as well as the ground and the hose to that bracket. Once your installation has been completed of your new laser tube, as you can see, it's very simple, quick release, quick disconnect, no soldering required on your part, no chance of electrical current shocking you because it's not even plugged in, no problem with connecting the new tube because it's a quick disconnect, no problem with the new straps because we include another set of rubber covers for you, and all you have to do is just install a new the hose to your tube, quick disconnection of your cable, strap down, you're done. Of course now we can take off our bungee cord, drop down the lid, lock the lid, you're done.